The only recognizable celebration yesterday of the Boston Tea Party's 234th anniversary was held by the Ron Paul for President campaign or by supporters of it. Sam Adams was represented in his anti-taxation spirit, possibly in the bottled form as well, as the Ron Paul movement celebrated by raising more than $6 million in a single day. That's a record. So where does this richly funded but unlikely bid for presidency go from here? What is the end game? Here to tell us is Ron Paul's campaign chairman, Ken Snyder. Mr. Snyder, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So where did this money come from? came from all over the United States. I mean, it's really surprising. We had about 55,000 people donate the $6 million in a 24-hour period. But what's really interesting for us is that about 24,000 of those people were first-time donors. I saw uh, Ron Paul give a speech last month in which he said, you know, there's, there's going to be a day where they're going to raise money. He didn't even know what the date was. Right. This seemed, and I mean that as a compliment, no, I understand. actually. Right. It's, this seemed to have taken place, this fundraising, almost completely outside the campaign itself. Right. Well, that's kind of the beauty of our campaign. Dr. T Paul talks about freedom, decentralization, and of course, because of the internet, now people are able to actually create things and take the initiative and actually do things because of the internet. So our job as a campaign is obviously to present Dr. Paul and do more of the traditional things, but also at the same time to make sure we get out of the way of a lot of very energetic and supportive people out there to do what they want to do. And of course, yesterday is proof of that. So this is a campaign that, that flies southwest, stays yes. the best western, eats in diners. I've seen it firsthand. Right. Well, you've got a lot of cash on hand as a result of that right. thriftiness. What are you going to do with all that money? Well, it's still as expensive as you know to run a national campaign. From the beginning of this campaign back in January, I said we're going to have to, to be successful, we're going to have to blend the old techniques with the new techniques. So we still have to do radio, television, direct mail, travel expenses, and those sorts of things. And of course, the country is very big. But, uh, you know, we're using the internet as much as we can, but it's going to be a proper blend of the old and the new. And I think that's what we're doing now. Do you have any sense of what's drawing people? I mean, there's so many facets to Ron Paul's yeah. message it's the small government element, the, the foreign policy policy stuff. What, what's the main draw? I've thought about that quite a bit, and Dr. Paul and I have talked about it. I really think what it comes down to now is people want real change. They, they really do. Uh, and that what it is that change, the change really is the message that we have, peace, freedom, and prosperity. There's a lot of people out there that I talk to around the country who are, are who what I call disgruntled Republicans. They realize that the Republican Party isn't the party of big government or small government anymore. They don't like it. But at the same time, our campaign is drawing a lot of new people who never were interested in politics. I mean, for example, not too long ago, I had a gentleman call. I happened to answer the phone. The gentleman said, I'm in my mid-40s. I've never registered to vote. I've never voted in my life. I heard Dr. Paul speak. I am now on my way to the DMV to register to vote for the very first time in my life. So for, for that perspective, we're drawing some disgruntled Republicans, but also a lot of people are new to the political system. So it is a movement. I, I called it a movement mm -hmm. throughout the show. That was not tongue-in-cheek. No. You've broken the, literally broken the record in one-day fundraising. That's you true. broke the record, and it was on A147 in this morning's Washington Post. I mean, it was a tiny item in the paper. It was ignored. Right. That must drive you bananas. Right, yes. Uh, but we're used to this, but we're keeping, uh, keeping uh, uh, you know, working to make sure that we get out there more and more. But, you know, I think that the mainstream media, by and large, uh, they are a little bit behind the times. I mean, comments uh, often about the press is usually about a year or two behind. The point is, something's going on out there. People like yourself and a few others are recognizing that. But a senior producer for one of the major news shows told me not too long ago, there is something going on, there's a story, and we're trying to find it out. So I think more people now are realizing there is, in fact, something going on. Yeah, John Stossel did a full hour with Ron Paul. They wouldn't even—they didn't even put it on ABC. They put it online. Yes, right. All right, Ken Snyder, I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks Thank you very me. much. Sure. Congratulations. Thank you. It's unbelievable.